Hey guys, Mario here, and what a week we've had. We had an election, we had a school board meeting, and we had a State of the Union address. And I want to talk to you guys about all three of them very quickly, but first we're going to start about the school board meeting. That was exciting. I loved my trolls. I gotta say, shout out to my trolls. When I mentioned on my ex that I am going to be, ex I was excited to practice my new tricks at the school board meeting, they automatically assumed I was going to Ontario or Chino. No, honey, I have a lot of issues here in my local community that I need to pay attention to, which is part of the reason why I am no longer focused and working with Gays Against Groomers. I need to work on my local community. Imagine my surprise when I read the school agenda yesterday and I saw that the school was planning on spending $500 for a keynote speaker at a BSU graduation celebration. So I started making phone calls to the district. I made a phone call to several high schools, I called the district office, and then I called the student services office. And I asked every single person that I could speak to about this graduation. What is it? Uh, is it? Is it available to all students? And finally, all three of them came to the same conclusion, is that no, this is not available to all students. This is available to only the BSU students, the only BSU club. So if you're part of the BSU club on any one of their campuses, then you can participate in this BSU graduation that the district will be paying for and was planning on spending $500 for a keynote speaker. I immediately went, wait a second. Are you offering a language, a Spanish language graduation? Are you offering a graduation celebration just in Spanish language for the 57% of Hispanics who live in your community? We have a very large Hispanic population. As a matter of fact, most of the students who graduate from college in this valley are Hispanic. And about 41,000 homes in our community, just in Lancaster alone, not including Palmdale, speak Spanish as their primary language. So how can you justify spending district money for a program that only benefits a select group of students. Furthermore, you have a bunch of parents who sit through a two-hour graduation, a three-hour graduation, not understanding a word they're saying, but when their child's name is called, they're up there clapping and they're proud as, as, as any other beaming parent. But how do you think they feel while they sit there and listen to you speak and they have no clue what you're saying? What is going on? That raised red flags in my district. They all sent the alarms. They started questioning each other. You saw them trying to defend, well, it is open to all students. They can they can attend, but they can't participate. And they said, well, then that means that they're not available to all students because you can go and watch, but unless you're part of the BSU, they get a second graduation, right? They get two celebrations, right? Well, yeah, they get two. No other student gets two, right? No, no other student. And of course, we pile the cherry on top with a little bit of culture jamming. And here comes my husband saying, hey, you know what? I'm a gay uncle. You know, is there going to be a GSA graduation for all the GSA clubs? Because, you know, gay students face an unsurmountable amount of, of, of hate and, and bullying during their high school years. And we want to share the funds equitably across all these special populations. And their eyes got so big, their lights went off and they went, we're going to table this till next month. Well, guess what? Next month is April. Your event is happening in May. You've got less than a month to plan this, which means we're going to probably start seeing this entire event fall apart before our very eyes. And I'm going to continue following this because it's not that I don't, it's not that I dislike a group of people. I just dislike the fact that our district is putting one group of people over another when you have a majority population that's already on the back burner. I digress. I want to talk to you guys about our campaign, our elections that happened on Tuesday that was a little bit of a disappointment, but at the same time, I'm resolved. I'm not sad. I Our candidate got 10,000 votes less than the mainstream Republican candidate. The Democratic candidate got 4,000 more votes than our alternative Republican candidate. So the way I look at it is, yes, we came in third place. However, we flexed and we showed that there are 20,000 people to the to the, uh, I guess, prospective candidates, 29,000 people, and said, wait a second, we have a challenge here. We can push you. And I told our candidate, I said, hey, even though you may have lost, consider this a win because you have now identified those people who are truly in your camp. And should that person who gets the, the nomination and maybe gets elected into office as a Republican, even though they're a rhino, they now realize that there are 10,000 people less than what she got to vote for her that will absolutely work 
to recall her, remove her, and make her life a very, very difficult. And it's not that we're going to, you know, show up at her house. No, no, no. We're going to call her office. We're going to show up at the state senate. We're going to put, apply pressure. That's what we do as grassroots organizations and as people. We call and we make our voices known. And if the elected leaders are not voting in the direction we want them to, our calls and our emails will hopefully guide them into the direction we want. And if they don't make those corrections, well then guess what? I know that you lost your 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 race by about 10,000 votes to the other Republican who we actually like. So those 10,000 people who they were disaffected are not going to be very difficult to turn considering that you're not guiding it in conservative principles. And the people who had initially voted for that other candidate are going to be very fired up to recall you. And I doubt that your donors are going to be happy that you're being recalled so soon into your uh, <clears throat> into your tenure as senator or assemblyman or elected official. This is something that I've learned, and that's why I say I'm not a sore loser. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not a sore loser. I'm not going to turn and be like, oh, it was stolen, da, da, da. No, girl, I'm going to resolve, and I'm going to reassess, and I'm going to readdress myself and say, okay, how can I make this work for me, for our local community? Because that's what this is all about. And then, of course, we have the State of the Union. I'm wearing me my shirt. And I guess highlighting that because, as we know, he likes to sniff small people, I guess you could say. Uh, he has, we've heard about the laptop information and the diary information, so that man is kind of creepy. He reminded me a lot about of Walter, I guess you could say, from that that puppet thing. Bah, 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 stay off my lawn. Bah, 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 bah. And then, of course, he gets triggered by a simple statement. What about Lincoln Riley? And, oh, Lincoln Riley! <laughs> We're illegal immigrants! We're illegal immigrants! And, of course, the leftists are having a meltdown because they're saying, you said illegal! You didn't say undocumented! This is the part that we're winning. We are winning the language war. The left hasn't moved far left enough for these protesters, and they're showing up to Democrat events causing a ruckus. They are ruining it for everybody. And the left is kind of trying to find their foothold, whether they want to continue where they're at, they want to move further left. Um, and the conservatives are just trying to shore up their base and try to stop the infighting. Because I see it online. I see everybody picking at each other over DeSantis and Nikki and Vivek and Trump and da 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 you know, Ultimately, you guys should all focus on your local municipality because what's happening in Huntington Beach is actually pretty significant. They passed a resolution, and it's about this close to passing, saying that if you want to vote in their city elections, you need voter ID. And the left is freaking out because it is a permissible law because no law exists in the state legislature or the national legislature that says you have to have ID to vote in a city election. And the city has every right to pass that law because cities have a higher level of autonomy than the state or federal government. And no law out specifically outlined at the state or federal level takes precedent over the municipality. So if there's no law at the state or national level, then the city can make whatever law they want. So here we go. I'm excited to see the results of that. The results are still trickling in. And we will talk to you guys again next week. I love you guys all, and I'll talk to you soon. Mwah! Bye, guys.